All right, gang, welcome back. Back to the big board, back to Sicily, Triumph and Folly, OCS, July 10th, 1943. Yada, 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 yada. So what's happened so far? Uh, for the very first turn, it always takes a while to kind of get the, get things kicked off in an OCS game. The first turn is often one of the longest turns. And I think this was no exception. We had uh, one, two, three, four, five. They're actually just HQs. Five, six. Oh no, that's right. Six, seven, eight divisions to land or drop. And in fact, I think there's another one here. Ninth somewhere. Second armored is in here somewhere. We haven't got him on the board yet. Which actually is going to pose a supply problem now that I think about it. But we'll deal with that in just a minute. <clears throat> Let's talk about the, the landings and the process here. I, I really, uh, you really need to understand the naval rules fairly well, uh, what the movement rates are. And then the, uh, because nothing else is said, it's automatically assumed that those movement rates apply in this specific game. And what I found happening was that uh, the, the there was a little bit of confusion for me in terms of how effective these coastal guns were going to be and all this sort of stuff. So that took a little bit of getting used to. <clears throat> and you might notice if you haven't seen, if you have seen, I should say, earlier pictures, uh, Zone uh, 11 here was populated, I think, by the 207th. And then the 206th was in the zone just underneath the camera, if you can imagine that. And those guys uh, had an opportunity, well, they were fired upon at the end of the movement phase by, bar by naval barrages, wherever the ships are here, and there's some others here. Uh, so that forced a role for them to either stay or sur basically surrender or dissipate. And both those formations uh, flew the coop and were and then taken off the board. At least that's my understanding, anyway. And uh, similar things happened on the other side of the board, on the right hand side. That we'll get to in a second, but we had more success there. Were less less fleeing and running on that side. Uh, just found a unit that doesn't is in the wrong spot. That is interesting. I think what we'll do while you're while you can't see. We'll move that to here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so we had this situation where we had to do these barrages, but before they did the barrages, the, the impact that the coastal uh, batteries actually have is forcing a DRM on the alt roll or the uh, amphibious landing table, and that gives them a minus one for each ranged each area that these units are ranged into and I was fairly I guess probably unfortunate in the placement of my units I was trying to cover as much ground as possible and really what I probably should have been trying to do was double up as much ground as possible so there was a mul there were multiple DRMs for the landings uh, I'm still unclear as to whether these landing craft actually Toddle off back to the NRP location, which is the kind of the uh, a waypoint, and then go back to the floating forces and then reload next turn and come back. I, I just I don't know. Well, maybe that's two turns, right? One turn to here, uh, turn uh, turn over there, and then then back. Um, <clears throat> not sure how that will work out. So the alt rolls, we were fairly lucky with them. Uh, most of them had a minus one, uh, at least, and I but I. But I only managed to lose a handful, a handful of guys. That's a son calling out. Uh, I lost uh, one, two, three, four, uh, three battalions of American tanks and one uh, regiment, one brigade, a divisional artillery. Uh, the, so, so the landings went fairly well. The British lost absolutely nothing, which was very surprising. And then we had, I oh, know you can see this, then we had the 82nd Airborne land. And the 82nd Airborne has to go through a multi-step multi exercise to land. You place the units where you want them to land, then you roll for scatter. And the first roll tells you how far they scatter, and the second roll will tell you uh, 
uh, the direction. And the minimum is, well, if you're all a six, you have one chance in six of not scattering. And uh, one through three, you'll scatter three hexes. Uh, I was trying to land in a kind of a pocket around here, and as you can see, these guys really just got hammered and, and spread all over the place. In fact, we ended up losing one, two, three, four, five battalions from the 82nd Airborne, which was just crushing. Pretty representative, I suppose. And then three, four, five, yeah, the same five battalions from the 1st Airborne as well with their landing. I'll show you that in a sec, so I'll flip that over. <clears throat> and so once you land, once you, you get your, your hex you're going to land in, uh, then you have to roll to see if it was successful. So there's a, a handful of rolls that have to go on here. Here's the 1st Airborne. I kind of spread them out over a fairly wide area. Uh, trying to land, land some guys here which was actually further up here. <laughs> Whoops, sorry, here. I was trying to get them up here. Uh, and then I had a pocket of fellas here. And as you can see, they scattered all over the place. The HQ ended up adjacent to this coastal defense unit. Just a mess. So then what happens, uh, once, once, you're on, once you've landed, you've made your alt rolls, You've uh, rolled for all your artillery and all that sort of good stuff, your artillery, all of your uh, airborne landings. Then you get to move everything half, then go through the combat cycle. We had no attacks here because the 206th, I think the 207th uh, cores uh, just basically evaporated. Over here we had one attack into Lakata. And uh, we also had an attack up here. We were trying to get uh, Kanakati here or no, I think that's the correct pronunciation there. I wanted to capture that village so that we could uh, protect these two roads from this uh, formation that was in reserve. And because the airborne ended up adjacent to it and survived its roll, I called in the one airstrike that I had available for the turn and brought a B-17 in uh, with an escort and just nailed that sucker pretty hard. Um, Put it just only got a DG on him, but that DG's the stack, right? All those guys. Well, in fact, why did I have a reserve marker on that? I've got one unit. I have no units there. Oh, okay. Well, that must have been a mistake. That must have been late. Well, you know what? They're DG'd now. There's a mobile uh, mobile artillery unit and some... Uh, that's actually worth a try of attack. Well, all right, pardon my digression. <laughs> I've just realized that I've... Uh, I thought I had most of the task force for, uh, for the conf group uh, in that hex, and I don't. I must have distributed it around. So that's a bit of a bit of a bother. Uh, all right, there was that attack. <laughs> Uh, we made one attack here to capture Skogalidi, or Skogalidi, and that well, all these all went off on pretty much max odds. We picked up surprise, and the minimum surprise upside was four column uh, advance, so that uh, really meant there was very little chance of losses for us here. And uh, in our exploit that we picked up, we then advanced. I try and build a little bit of a line. And also prepare to take on uh, these these guys here next turn. Uh, so there's an airfield there that we'll want to get. And let's see, the, oh, here's the 206. So it wasn't the 206 that, that, that broke and ran. It was the 207th and one other. So the 206th stayed. We managed to eliminate uh, the forces that were in, uh, in uh, Pazalo here. As we also did in, in uh, Avola up on the right flank here as well. So the British and the US had pretty successful landings, no losses in combat, but mainly losses in attrition and things like that. We ran a overrun here uh, with that armored unit. You could just make it. Uh, it was one movement point to here, and then, uh, you know what? He would have to have been flipped over actually in order for us to do that.
So let me just pause and we'll tell you what would have happened because I actually wrote the die rolls down. Yeah, so that still would have been a kill. So we would have been okay because we were uh, we were up on the high end of the column table on, on the combat table, and I may need to actually check to see if I could even conduct a overrun into that terrain because that's city terrain, not village terrain. So I may have made a mistake in this hex here. Uh, hmm. Now I'm now I'm curious about whether I made a mistake there or not, because it feels like I might have, which means I, I need to put that in this unit back here, because uh, that would have been a three to one, and with a six column shift, one, two, three, four, five, six, that would have brought us up to there, and we rolled an eight plus four on the roll. Yeah, eight was a twelve. Yeah, so it would have been dead no matter what. It's just a matter of whether or not uh, we can actually conduct that overrun. And I don't want to bog up the rest of the video in that. That's already taken up three minutes. So let's, uh, let's know that I will check that and make sure that we could actually do that correctly. So that's the first turn for the Allies. You can get a feel for the situation there. And I will uh, now begin the access turn for turn one. Later.